I do uh, a lot of double firing. Uh, there are um, categories like, such as the Santa Fe Indian Art Market where you can enter like a traditional, just traditional pottery where it's all hand dug clay, hand processed, all hand formed, um, and traditional firing, whatever is you know, like traditional to your tribe. And for me, it's just a wood firing. Um, but for like just doing shows where I want to keep my inventory up and not have so much breakage, I do a lot of double firing where I do um, just like a, a low fire uh, for potters. It, it, I do like a cone firing because I just have a small kiln, but um, like a um, 0 010 to about a, like an 0 014. So, uh, it really is similar to wood firing, so it still keeps the integrity of the pot. Uh, but if I do the kiln firing first, I have a lot more control over the heating process. So um, it just, um, so I don't have as much breakage. I don't lose as many pieces after I've done all the work on them. Um, and after they're kiln fired, then uh, there are a couple of different things that I do. Um, I might reheat them until they're pretty warm and I have to use like, you know, thick, heavy, um, like welding gloves to transfer to a container where I might do a, re a reduction firing where I use oak leaves, a horse manure, a real dry mixture and really ignite that material up and then actually just set the pieces, you know, down in the fire. Um, and so once that the flame is all coming up, I really just add a lot more uh, dry organic uh, materials. And when it's the smoke is coming out, I put a lid on it and just let it basically burn itself out. And so the black would come from the carbon. Another thing that I like to do, and I just started it in the last several years, is um, I might just wood fire. And so it would maybe just come out like um, the natural color of the clay, clay, similar to the color of this. So it's kind of a terracotta color. But um, we have like a little fire pit where we have windy rose down by our pond. So I do what they call a flash firing, where you actually just, um, it's just like a sandstone rocks, you know, we've got like a little uh, concrete base to it. We have weenie rose down there, but so I'll just like build a fire in our little pit, get some, some really good hot coals going, and I actually set the pieces right in that, those hot coals. And then I just add, you know, some small sticks and whatever, and let it burn itself out. And I like to do that because it lets me get more of the, the fire cloud look. Um, so, uh, so many different ways, you know, you can fire the pottery. Uh, one really interesting thing that I learned, and I don't know um, if you can see from the, t the tape, but this piece is more bronzy looking. It's kind of brown. Um, and I did it quite by accident. Since I fire in a container, like just a number two wash tub. And at the end, um, when I did this by accident, yeah. my container actually, the, the container was fine, but the metal lid that I put on it kind of had warped and it let some smoke get in. So I learned that if I can just offset that lid toward the end of the firing when it's still like, everything's still really warm and just throw more dry leaves and stuff in and it gets like a bronzy look. I've had people ask me at shows, is that bronze or pottery? Because it just takes on that. It's not black, you know, like this is a broken piece, but like that piece, but maybe you can see the color difference. So firing's fun. I always say, and I've said it several times since I've been here, it's like Christmas morning. Um, and firing, you know, um, a lot of people that are interested in learning more about the traditional pottery, you know, you do go through the steps of cleaning the clay and processing it and coil building and doing your design work and um, in the burnishing, but um, that, that final stage, you know, where you've done all the work and fired the pottery, then that's like your reward, I guess. <laughs> Sometimes, not always though, but most of the time.